What's up guys, Brunsnex back, and today we have a comparison. Rhino Pro Teal versus the Purple Hammer Reactive. Two thick shell solid performers duking it out on the lane side by side with Specto running. But before we get to all the fun, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, let's see the Purple Hammer Reactive versus the Rhino Pro Teal. All right, it's comparison time. Rhino Pro Teal versus the Hammer Purple Reactive. Two similar balls, thick shell balls. The numbers are slightly different. If you look at it, 256 versus 258, 032 versus 027. So what is that gonna mean for performance on the lanes? We're gonna find out. We have Specto running. We're gonna try these at different parts of the lane. I brought them back to similar surface together since they've both been used. I hit them with a 1500 pad and a light 2000 on top to get them similar to each other. So this test will be great. So we're gonna start, we'll start with the Rhino Pro. We'll start it from the first angle out and we'll just see heads up what these two do against each other. We have test medium pattern out there, so we have plenty of friction. I'll be able to play all different parts of the lane with this. All right, wrap the 10 on that one. Ball set up pretty nice. So Rhino Pro Teal, new vintage release from Brunswick. A lot of excitement for it right now. People are going crazy for the 30th year anniversary. But on the same time, this purple solid reactive hasn't been a slouch. It's been very well received, very well used. So we'll see if that number a uh, little higher uh, RG and lower differential make much of a difference for this ball when it goes down the lane. I'll try it heads up. Okay. Let's see those a little bit different side by side on the Specto data. Looked like those balls were right on top of each other, pretty close. Uh, the Purple Hammer just pushed down a little bit further on the line and responded later, leaving what we left. So we're gonna move it in, next zone. So we saw the data. Let's start with Purple Hammer this time. We're moving five. And we'll see if that is going to be a factor the rest of the, the video or not, you know, with the higher RG, lower diff. Or if maybe this ball just likes to hook more when you move in. We'll find out. Okay. Decent shot there. Mixered it up. I guess I should use the Brunswick one to wipe off the Brunswick ball and the hammer one to wipe off the hammer ball. So flare-wise, let's see if we get a look at this so we get an idea of flare. Tight flare rings, as to be expected with a ball with 027 diff. Is there anything showing on this one? No, not really, not yet, because we didn't really throw on oil last shot. All right, so we'll try to duplicate that shot with the teal. And we'll see if there's any difference side by side. All right, that should be a pretty fair comparison. Let's take a look at the Specto data to be sure. So right now we're seeing kind of a trend now with the Rhino Pro seeing it just a smidge earlier, being a little bit lower RG. They're both still high RGs, but just a little bit more diff. Let's see if we can see some flare on this ball. Obviously this one picks up a little bit more, but harder to see. But if I had to guess, just slightly more separation, not a whole lot. You know, the amount of flare between these two balls are gonna be around the same. So let's move five. Let's start slowing down the speed and projecting the ball out to the right. So far we've got 10 pin, 10 pin with the Rhino. Let's try to kick this 10 out this time. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave a nine pin instead. That's funny. All right, so obviously that ball, when you slow it down and kind of get around it, responds really well to the friction comes off it really hard and obviously didn't stop hooking because I left the nine pin. Now we can definitely see the flare rings on here. Oh, sorry, tilted the camera there. 
So you get a difference there. Switch towels so hammer ball doesn't feel left out there. It's very important. You gotta match your towel to your ball, right? I don't know. All right, let's try the purple hammer reactive from this zone here and slow hook it out there. Those had to have been right on top of each other, but of course we'll defer to Specto to tell us the true story. All right, so we're starting to see a theme now where on that shot, the teal went high flush, but left a nine pin and the purple uh, just went flush, just took everything out. So is there a big difference there? Marginal, as far as the chart goes on Specto, they're pretty right on top of each other, but now I'm noticing how in the very last few feet of the lane through the pins is where I'm seeing the difference. So let's move another five with purple, then we'll just keep this party going. So we moved five, we moved 10, we're now 15 left. We're gonna be playing it out, really, really opening up the angles here. about four great shot so I don't normally like to play these big wide open angles with a low diff ball especially a high diff I mean unless they're really dry and you got a lot of back end you can do it but typically I'm using something ASIM but for the sake of this we got to test it from all different angles and see so that ball came off of it nice went through the pins hard Let's try the teal in that same zone and see what we get. There we go. That one looked like it picked up a little sooner, but let's check out the Specto numbers on those two. So even though they both struck, they both look great, it looked like the purple hammer got down there a little bit longer before it tipped and went back through the pins, where the Rhino Pro started up just a little bit sooner. Started out about a half board wider on launch and then picked up a little bit, but obviously both still good results. So we're going to move five more. This will be the last zone that we test. Definitely going coast to coast and using all of the bowling ball's energy to see if there is any difference between the Rhino Pro Teal and the purple reactive solid hammer. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Yeah, that took all of it. That's like the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. But that's a lot of boards to be covering for a ball like that, especially on a fresh pattern. You know, if you watch the original video on the Rhino Pro Teal, which I'll link up there, you know, this ball is definitely gonna be better playing straighter angles shutting them down and just striking for days playing them up the lane. I don't like to go coast to coast with the thick shell balls just because they don't have a whole lot of differential typically. But sure, I mean, you can see a little bit of the flare there. One more time before we put this ball away. Switch towels, of course, for the purple. And get this last shot in, then we'll talk about what we saw. But I think it's, uh, the story's kind of already told itself. All right, last shot. Oh, what a messenger. Good kick. Thought those were pretty close. Let's check out the Specto data one more time. So it looks like I started the purple hammer just a little bit further right off my launch, but it still hit about the same target, the same break point, and the same part in the pocket. So. When you're comparing these two, Rhino Pro Teal versus Purple Hammer, just know that they are in the same class of bowling ball. They're a thick shell, higher RG, lower differential. Obviously, both balls are very cool and the hitting power is extreme. The Rhino Pro Teal with the 30th anniversary coming out in August is actually a really cool ball. Flares just a little bit more, picks up just a little bit earlier in my eyes. Purple Hammer has been a mainstay in the hammer line. Good upgrade from, say, Purple Hammer Urethane when you just need a little bit more hook and a little bit more pop that urethane just doesn't give you. So which one are you gonna pick? Rhino Pro Teal 
purple hammer? That's up to you to decide. You guys let me know in the comments which one you prefer, Rhino Pro Teal, Purple Hammer Reactive. No wrong answers. Please subscribe if you haven't. Talk to you guys soon.